In this example, we're going to solve a cubic equation in uh, Excel. We want to find the roots of this equation. And so uh, if y equals 0, for example, we'd have uh, the y equals 0 values, and we would have three different roots or three different solutions to this. Okay, so if I put 0 in here, then I'm going to be able to solve for those. So let's do this one first. Um, let's solve this one first, and then we'll move on to a more complicated example which is the Redley-Kwong equation of state. Uh, but essentially it's going to give us three roots as well, uh, depending on uh, the pressure. Okay, so let's uh, start off with just a cubic equation, and we'll find the roots and then go on to somewhat of a more engineering uh, calculation. Okay, so I'm going to do open up Excel, and uh, have a blank workbook here. Okay, so uh, what I want to have is um, my x value, and I'll just give it a guess. Okay, I'll give it a guess about negative 1. I want to find the first root, and then uh, I'll have my y value, and that will be equal to 0. And then let's see um, how much this equation um, is not, okay, so I'm going to have a, is not uh, balanced on, on both sides. So left-hand side is just going to be my uh, y. And I'll just say that equals, um, you know, this value here, the y value. Okay, and then right-hand side of my equation is going to be, um, you know, the negative x uh, cubed minus x squared uh, plus 0 0.1. Okay, I'll resize that. Let me make this just a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Okay, so, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and type uh, this one in, I'll do minus, reference this cell uh, to the third, minus that cell again, squared, um, plus 0 0.1. Okay, right now the left-hand side and right-hand side are not equal to each other. So one thing that I can do is um, you know, try to make those, uh, so this is the difference. Uh, I can say that uh, it's going to be equal to this, minus uh, b6 minus b5, and then I can square it, for example, if I want to include this as an objective uh, in my optimization. And then I want to try to minimize uh, oh, minimize uh, to 0. Okay, so once I've minimized to 0, I've found uh, where the left-hand side and right-hand side are equal to each other. And so I can uh, come into solver, data, uh, and then solver, if you don't have that, again, go to File and Options, and then come here to uh, the Add-ins, and just select the solver add-in, or the uh, Excel add-ins, okay, and click Go. Just make sure that's selected right here, the solver add-in, and when you click OK, then under Data, you'll have this uh, solver. Okay, so now what I want to do is set my objective. It guessed that it was going to be B7, and I want to set that to a minimum by changing the cells. Um, I'll just change my X value. Okay, and uh, I may want to make the, to unselect this to make unconstrained variables non-negative. Okay, I want that to be uh, negative. Okay, so there's my first root right there. I'll just go ahead and copy that over here. Here are my roots to my equations, uh, my equation. So uh, let's go ahead and find another one. If we come back to, uh, you know, here, uh, just graphically, we have another one around negative 0.4. So I'm going to give it another guess. Uh, this one a little bit closer. I'll do, uh, let's say, I guess, negative 0 0.3. Okay, and, uh, you know, I could manually change this, you know, negative 0 0.4, and I'd see that it's, you know, it's going down, uh, but let's just give the solver something to to work on. Okay, I'll do data solver, and I'll redo this optimization. And it said it found a solver solution. Okay, so here's another root uh, right here to that cubic equation. Okay, and let's do it one more time for the positive root. I'll put something right around 0 0.2. Data solver, and then click solve. 
Okay, so there's my third root uh, right there. Okay, so three roots of this cubic equation. So we're gonna do the same uh, thing, but now just with a more complicated equation. This is called the redley kuang equation of state, and it relates uh, pressure to temperature and volume uh, for real gases. So you have something like an ideal gas, like PV equals nRT. Uh, you know, in, in this case, uh, we're gonna rename this to V hat, that's gonna be the volume divided by the moles. So P V hat equals uh, the universal gas constants times the temperature. Uh, but for, for real gases, uh, as you compress, okay, this is for ideal gases. This is for real gases. As you compress, those molecules get closer and closer together, and the assumption that ideal gas has is that they're all just points that occupy no volume, but for real gases, um, you know, that's not the case. Uh, so ideal, you can compress it, you don't have any volume effects uh, from the molecules of the gas itself, but in uh, this equation right here considers that the molecules themselves have volume, and that as you compress them, uh, you know, as you get tighter and tighter uh, with higher pressure, you're going to uh, transition into a, a liquid phase. Okay, so this is going to approximate, um, you know, the P, uh, the pressure versus volume, and it's going to look kind of like this. Um, you know, if you have different temperatures, if you increase the temperature, then uh, it's going to be higher like that, okay? And then we can do a phase diagram just by mapping the roots. Oh, I didn't do a very good job on that. Mapping the maximum and minimum, minima of those, uh, those points, and then that's going to be the uh, liquid and vapor Okay, this is going to be the liquid area, and that's going to be the vapor area. So we're going to use this uh, readily kuang equation of state to help us determine, um, you know, the roots to this equation when there's a certain pressure. Um, let's say a pressure right here, okay. Um, then I'm going to have three roots to that, and I want to be able to determine these three roots. Uh, the first one is going to be my, my liquid root. Okay, the, this one over here is going to be my vapor root, and this one right here is kind of a, a false artifact of just using a cubic equation to um, describe this system. It's a non-realistic root. But let's just go ahead and find these three roots, uh, similar to what I did for this problem, but it's just a slightly more complicated equation. We're gonna use uh, for ethane, um, we have some constants there, the A and the B constants. As long as you have those, you can use uh, this equation of state right here. Okay, so let's go back to Excel now. And um, I just created a new sheet. And let's go ahead and just type in a couple things. Just to, uh, you know, for our pressures and temperatures and other things, okay? So... There's our data. We have uh, pressure it is going to be one bar. In case I'm going to use three different cells to write these, the name right here. I need to insert, just right click. Okay, insert, and this will be our name, value, and unit. And uh, control B gives a bold, and control U is underline. Okay, and I'll make this bigger. Okay, uh, so temperature um, is going to be equal to 77 uh, degrees Celsius, but we can't use, um, so this will be uh, temperature in degrees C. Um, actually, I already put the unit there. Well, I'll just do this. Okay, equals 77 plus 273.15, and this will put it in Kelvin. Okay, which is we need for our expression. And uh, then let's go ahead and do the universal gas constant. I'll just do RG. 
And this one, we're going to want a universal gas constant in units of centimeters cubed times bar divided by mole divided by Kelvin. Uh, yeah, you could find it in joules per mole Kelvin um, as well, and then do the unit conversions. But let's just see if we can find this. Um, and I'll go to universal gas constant. Um, and it'll have it here in Wikipedia with a big list of different ones. Um, let's see if we can find this uh, bar. Hmm. Okay, this is kind of the closest one right here. I have to do a couple unit conversions from kilopascals to bar, but uh, pretty close. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put this, this uh, unit in right here. This is going to be 80 3.145 okay and then let's do our a constant as well we had that from our problem statement okay complicated units there but it makes it work out and 2.877 e to the eighth okay and then it's going to be centimeter to the sixth times bar divided by Kelvin to the 0 0.5 Five divided by moles squared. So that just makes it work out. It's constant. It's probably empirically determined. Um, so just the units are there just to make it, uh, the units cancel and be able to work out. Um, okay, and uh, times, uh, let's see, mole. Uh, I'll just do divided by mole. Okay. So there I have uh, all of my constants that go into this. Now let's go ahead and just solve this uh, we have like we had before we'll have the um, the left hand side of our equation this is just going to be pressure so I'll set that equal to one bar okay and then the right hand side is going to be everything else okay I'll, I won't write that out uh, we'll just make uh, the equation here okay let me make this move this over just a little bit so we can see it expand this one okay so I have equals and I'll do R times T don't forget to use the Kelvin one and then I'll divide by oh you know what? I need a volume in here let's do this first of all I need to guess a volume okay this is going to be kind of like guessing my X value from that last one um, Okay, let me just go ahead and insert a row here too. Just separate these a little bit. Okay, so this is the one that I'm going to be guessing, and uh, let me go ahead and just highlight it. Okay, and uh, okay, so this is going to be centimeters cubed per mole, and let's just guess a value of um, 100 right now. That's going to be kind of a liquid um, molar. Uh, molar volume so um, for it's, it's be typical of a liquid okay then we have on our right hand side let's go ahead and complete this now that we have the volume and so that's going to be um, equal to our volume minus our B value okay and then we'll subtract and we put in here our a value and divided by a really big uh, expression, um, we're going to have temperature to the uh, 0 0.5 times our volume times volume plus B. Oh, I got to write B right there. Okay. So I think this is, oh, and I did something there. Uh, yes, just a parenthesis was off. Let me check that. Um, okay, I think everything looks okay. Um, let me just double check it just to make sure that I don't have an expression off here. It looks it looks okay to me. Okay, so there's our right hand side, and then we'll do a difference uh, squared. Um, Okay, between the right and the left hand side, we'll square that. So 
we want to try to minimize uh, this and by changing the, the, the volume. Okay, so we want to try to find the volume, our root of that expression. And so we're going to minimize, um, okay, hold on, let me get this. Right here is our objective. We're going to change the cell right here, V equals 100. Unselect this. Uh, and in this case, volume is always going to be positive, so you can leave that selected if you want. And then uh, we'll go ahead and keep the solver solution. Okay, so there's our liquid root right here. Okay, liquid molar volume. Okay, let's go up a little bit more. Um, we'll just set a constraint now. Let's see if we can just set a constraint on this, add a constraint. So we say that our volume has to be greater than or equal to 100. Okay. Let's see if I can do this again. It has to be greater than, okay, cancel. Okay, I already, I already got that in there. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and solve this again. Okay, it's just gonna go right to that uh, constraint. We need, you need to kind of push it over this. Uh, this uh, it's gonna try to go to this value right here. So really the only way that we can do that is just give it a better, uh, a better guess, okay? Um, let's just go ahead and try um, something that's gonna be closer to our vapor volume and that one might be something around uh, 30,000 okay and then try to optimize this again we're just gonna get rid of this one okay and we'll solve okay here's our vapor root right here and one way that you can kind of get an approximation for the vapor root if you're saying wait a minute how did you just uh, come up with these guesses, okay? Um, vapor molar volume. One of the things that we can do is just approximate um, a molar volume from ideal gas, V, like ideal, uh, and that's just going to be equal to R times T divided by P. That's our, um, you know, this would be uh, the ideal gas molar volume. So a real gas is going to be uh, just a little bit less in this case. Okay, but this could be a good approximation um, for the ideal. Uh, a good approximation for the liquid root um, is going to be 1.1 times B. Okay, that's just uh, equals 1.1 times uh, B. Okay, that's just a good place to start. Uh, start for liquid root, um, and then this would be the start for the vapor root, and then the one in between is going to be, uh, or the one that's, um, you know, the non-physically realizable one is going to be somewhere in between. Uh, that's kind of like our middle root. So if I gave a guess, um, let's say a thousand, let's just guess a thousand, see where this uh, takes us. Okay, that still went to the vapor root. Okay, so I'm gonna guess just a little bit lower. Let's go 500 and solve it. Okay, so here's our middle root. Um, okay, and we'll just throw that one away because uh, it's just an artifact of the equation. Okay, so just to review uh, what we've done um, with this exercise is just, uh, first of all, we solved a cubic equation of state, found the roots to that, showed how to pose the equation so that we could use solver to, to find these roots for us, um, you know, with y equals zero. And this one is just a little bit more complicated. Now we have a certain pressure, one bar here, and we wanted to find the roots to the molar volumes, V. Okay, we can't just rearrange this expression and solve for V analytically necessarily. It'd be a little bit uh, more difficult, so we're gonna use this root finding method to find our um, molar volumes uh, given a certain pressure.